Well, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm very glad that even in this COVID-19 situation, Force Asia is still carry on, and this is very commendable. And there are many events that are cancelled, and it's quite a disappointment. Because we do look forward for Force Asia that we get all our friends together to meet up, to exchange our ideas, and get things moving on. So today, I'm going to touch on a topic maybe quite relevant to this time, because everybody will have stay home notice and do not know what to do with their child. So how to get my child AI ready? That's a topic that may be worth uh, thinking about. Some background about myself, I'm William, um, Head of Technology Projects at the School of uh, Electronics and Infocom Technology from ITE College West. And basically I run a makerspace called eSpace. So I will share our experience, how we get our kids, our youth uh, interested in AI and get them to go go deep. So we, this is no news secret, all right, it has been around, it has been made famous by Mr. Andrew Ng. He's saying that AI is the new electricity, and it is true. The world is going to transform, even I believe will be accelerated uh, with this COVID-19 situation. That everything will be automated, everything will be with AI, and how do we therefore get our next generation ready? So I will give you the four steps, which I think we apply in our makerspace. Um, Four steps to get your child or your youth or your uh, charge ready for AI. Well, first thing is convince yourself that your AI is your child's future. You have to believe and you have to be convinced. Because that is a great motivation. If not, you won't move on. And next thing is you have to lead by example. And I'll show you some examples. And we we dealt leading leading example ready of motivation for the child and for yourself. And next thing is create ownership not on yourself, but on the child. You, it is, is the ownership to learn. You must own it so that it will able to be a continual motivation to move forward. And last part, but not least, coding is boring. We have to make it fun. And engineers make things fun. We make the worst of all situations fun. And with that's why we can have our overnight coding session and things like this. So we have to make it fun. So let me go through one by one. First is convince yourself. If you're not convinced, Please go and get Time Magazine, Newsweek, MIT Magazine, or you look at World Economic Forum, which I think is very recently, they just posted on 16th of January 2020, which I can share with you here. Here, what you need to know about future of work. Well, in short, it's going to be automated, it's going to be a machine driven, and that is coming up soon. If you are not convinced, you can watch this YouTube video. Just a short one. What did the expert say? So are you convinced? I oh, hope you are. So knowing all this, there's a responsibility for us to make our generation, next generation ready, AI ready. So how to go about? And of course you say that, oh, it's too hard. AI is hard. Python is hard. Coding is hard. Everything is hard. But this is the evidence that it can be done. Um, all my students here are not very academically inclined, but they have finished this AI for you program on their own and they went through it and they get a cert of accomplishment uh, from Intel after certifying their own AI projects. At the end of the whole journey, they have to come up with a social impact AI project on their own. And it's a very grueling process. In fact, this group 
went through harder time because they only have a short time frame to prove themselves while we have one over year to do that for the other batches. So to convince you that this is a close partnership that we do with Intel. So let me share you, with you uh, what Intel uh, share about us. Oops. So here is an Intel partnership AI for you with uh, ITE and we hope to build an enable AI enable future. Well, that's about that. Going back to here, so it can be done. So we must be convinced that we must raise the next generation and it can be done. So what's next? Lead by example. So I will share with you that how do we go by by learning? You can come to Lifelong Institute to take up courses, definitely for sure. Or you can come to IT, we have short courses, Skill Future Series, which you can go to our website. You just look for under course, part time course, Skill Future COC competency. And existingly, uh, down here, there are already courses on AI related solutions. For example, in Tech Amber, you will have some uh, chatbot, RPA, things like these are all stated there. Okay, you can have a look. And the course uh, fee is very, very surprisingly affordable after government subsidies, especially there's a skill future credit coming in. You are talking about a range of $50 and plus plus for two day course. So make full use of it to lead by example. And if you do not have motivation enough, these are two seniors from RSVP. Basically, they are my trainees and they are uh, fulfilled learning how to fly uh, DJI Telo drone, Swan drone with AI built in and they lead by example. And now their job is to train other seniors, which is definitely our father's age or to my youth age will be their grandfather age to, uh, to do it. If you are not convinced, well, Look at this lady here, Auntie Judy. Uh, yesterday she just messaged me over Facebook. How do I solve? This is her question. What's wrong? I've been checking my code for so long. I can't find where under indent does not match outer indent level. Well, that, that is a very challenging thing, especially from Facebook or mobile. How do you go to spot that mistake? Well, uh, being one good thing, being a teacher for so long and students make so much mistake that we I spotted it is here. Notice there's an additional space in front of here, and that is actually solved the problem. And this auntie Judy guess her age. Uh, not yet, but close. Uh, she's in her seventies, and she started off with block programming. And now I challenge them because of COVID-19, you can't come to my campus. Um, please learn Python on your own. And I give them some guide, which is the same guide that I gave to students. So that is lead by example. Yes. What do you mean by block program? HDB block program? No, I mean uh, block micro bit. Make block. Oh, micro bit. Okay. Uh, the seniors started with that. We started with uh, block programming like Scratch, like uh, uh, micro bit. These seniors come to you or you can Wait, I can go to their community center or they come to me. So they both way. So let us move on. So why is this? Then we need to create an ownership to learn. And this is how we do it with the Intel AI for Youth program. They have four phases, inspire, acquire, experience, and power. Inspire is to really get them excited. That is pretty easy. You just print some AI products, uh, AI games, and they will be uh, excited. Then we will teach them on the skills, which is started, as you can see, is micro bit block programming before we move on to Python. And of course, we bring in laser cutter, uh, 3D printing because uh, AI project is not a standalone software project. It encompasses with the hardware, fixing up the prototype, and there are, there are things that you need to make. So we need to equip them with that skill. After that, they go through boot camp. And during the boot camp, in their experience phase, which is usually uh, one week or two weeks, which is uh, going to happen soon, uh, in a few weeks' time, and my students coming back, they will learn about AI drones and also AI car. A simple one that is a self-driving car that is drive uh, using OpenCV to track the back line and you and using the camera to differentiate the different traffic sign and make the decision to turn left, turn right, move forward or to stop. And after that, they are able to do projects with the Koreans and also hopefully we can work with some of the partners in UN and the United States. We would like to travel to there, but because of COVID-19, um, what we're going to do is likely teleconference first. We have to make use of Skype, we have to make use of 
uh, Microsoft Teams just to you know, get the project started and when the COVID-19 situation is better, we would like to fly over. So the ownership is that the student need to get themselves ready so that they can work with the overseas friends. And there is a bit of peer pressure there because our overseas friends expect our students to be somewhat competent and they themselves expect their partners overseas to be competent so they are actually motivated by each other to be competent. So finally, after doing all this bootcamp experience, they are supposed to do an AI project which is creating social impact. So things like recycle with AI. Can you use recycle AI technology to do recycling? Can you use it to dispense medicine to their seniors in a more efficient way? So these are the previous projects that my students actually came up and get their certification by, from Intel. This is their cert and they feel very proud of it. And if engineers from Force Asia, would, uh, companies in Force Asia would like to endorse students of their competency, I think that would be a great thing to do. So create an energy to learn. And let me give you an example that what we do in the overseas. This is actually a YouTube video done by um, EBS, Education Broadcasting System of South Korea. And they recently post this AI program up on YouTube. And you can uh, and you can get a glimpse of what my students and their and the Korean students do together over two days doing AI projects together. And there's a lot of struggles, there are a lot of pain, but actually it's a good time to go together. So let me move to that here and enjoy. A short clip. Pardon me, no subtitle. <laughs> I believe we watched through a lot of K drama we should be able to. Singapore IT 고등학생들이 부산 최상 건데요. 이메일 진짜 엑사이먼트. 에 히어 컴스 스트레스 만든 케미스트 왔네. 네. 아니 That's my evil twin brother. Very happy to see you. Okay, so this time around, we are going to show things to the whole Korea and the whole world. This Kenneth와 지석이 저는 AI 자동차를 만들어 보겠습니다. 그래도 이제 고객들 시작해. 고객들 해서 먹는. So you may ask me, is there any language barrier? The answer is no. There's such as called Google Translate. Of course, the other way is maker language, which is coding. Through coding, you can communicate. No, they can't. Okay, so they have a translation program. But because of the software we are doing, they can communicate. And you can see how reluctant for them not to go, don't want to go for lunch. Because they are so excited with the whole project. So you can catch this video, uh, later I will tell you where you can get it on the lane. It's, it started with a lot of, uh, from the university in the States, in the Europe, and followed all the way back to Singapore and all the way back to Korea. So you can have a look. Did they finish the drone and the car? Uh, the answer is drone yes, car no. Two days or three okay. days. It's okay to fail. Because we have to teach in the in, in future, attack and enable future, failure is part of education. And because of failure, they learn further. Right. So ownership, okay, last part, but not least, make it fun. How to teach Python. I'm very glad that uh, Force Asia have a Pi game, uh, Python Pi game uh, session, and that is one of the way to get students uh, uh, fun. Just like I mentioned about Auntie Judy, well, she is learning this book now. Uh, and 
I'm very glad for this author. I really appreciate him very much because he make it free. The whole book is online. And he's not only the only book that he put online. You can either buy the book from Amazon. I, I will, wish, will hope everybody that can afford going to get it. But he has put the whole chapter here. And guess, where is Auntie Judy and which chapter? Want to make a guess? Seven. Seven is too short. Too okay, short. I give you a clue. Let's go back to my slides. Um, let me try to go back and see where Auntie Judy was currently today. Chapter 11. Chapter 11. Okay, Bagels, the dog python. And Auntie Judy is there. I will show my student that very soon. Okay. What was her background? She is a housewife. No, no, when she was younger. She's not an engineer that played for training for sure. Wow. And that's the passion. Right? And she took not only herself, she got a group of seniors in Taman Jurong, uh, uh, keep aging to learn together. So while we are learning for these games, don't just make it like, um, okay, there's a tic-tac-toe game and you just run the code and you understand code and make it uh, work. No, that's not the objective. We should challenge our students or our child in such a way. Now you have a tic-tac-toe, it's working. Uh, computer versus player, you just play through. Can you make the game in such a way it's computer versus computer? Make it fun. For example, this is computer versus computer. This is a video of it. It's running 100 rounds, computer versus computer. Actually, you will discover certain things of the algorithm. It is biased. Whosoever starts first uh, usually will lose. <laughs> okay, that I know. You see, there's a certain bias that you can see computer win uh, how many times? Computer win 46 times, AI player brain 21 times. Tie 33. Why? It's biased. And these are questions you can prompt up if the child or the youth is able to do it. Think of it. At the end of the book, you will learn this game. I think it is a very interesting game. It is a, it's a, it's a something to avoid obstacle. Let me run it. Free sound for Maro Brothers. Super. It's a Dodger game. So, so that the thing is actually analyzing and moving the No, no, this one actually, of course, is player moving. The, oh, okay. It's a simple player pie game that from this book. So make it fun. And I think this with COVID-19, anybody can do it. Uh, but first thing, lead by example, parents, teachers, go through this book first. All right. Actually, when you go to up to chapter 11, you are somewhat having the Python basics with really. you. Okay, let me check the time, make sure we are on time. So make it fun. What other things we can make it fun? Okay, let me click. Well, this is Donkey Car. If you are not uh, aware of Donkey Car, Donkey Car is a very big RC car that you put a Raspberry Pi on top and you actually drive it many rounds around the circuit then if, after that you go through the Kara's training AI training and you will self-drive on your own this is an open source uh, the project that is uh, available out on the web and you can buy the whole entire car from Hong Kong it's called, I think it's called Robocar Store right? so here what we did is we, the car is somewhat a bit expensive for every student in my school to use it so what we did is we port it over, and you notice later in the video, it is a micro bit with a handphone. The handphone is basically our IP camera. And we 3D print everything, and we use the same algo and make it run. So enjoy the video. This is our micro bit talking car. We purposely let it off and see whether it we're really able to come back to prove it's autonomous. Cornering, surprisingly able to be done pretty well. Sharp corner, no issue. When it comes to gentle side, there's some issue, but you're able to come back and recover. We were very surprised. We only drive this car around the track for around 10 rounds or so before we start for training. So, you use a handphone to remote control the car? No, we don't use the handphone to remote control. We use the handphone to project the image. The video image back to... This is a PC interface from Donkey Car. You actually, you project the, You can have the image on the screen. And a remote control can be from the PC. But that is to drive the car around many times before you go for the Kara's training. So you can check it out. It's called donkeycar.com. Alright, it's a very interesting project. And uh, how we want to make it more fun, we're going to build a city for this car. If the students love Fast and Furious, then we go for Fast and Furious. Right? That's something to make it fun. Of course, next thing, students love drones. And this is our Swamp Jones performance, 25 drones. 
using DJI Tello EDU and it's a very affordable drone. Please, when you purchase it, please purchase the black color one with the EDU because the software development kit is open for everyone to use. But don't get the one that is white color. White color is just for flying for fun. So what we have is we have 25 of them and we flew it in a swamp formation to get students interested in programming. And the next stage, and we, we have another version of this uh, swamp drones is to fly through loops, recognizing signs to make it like uh, do autonomous drone racing. You can see that in our Facebook. So enjoy this uh, one minute drone performance. Sorry, the music is a bit soft. Bring in the techno music, students will go crazy about it. In fact, you can teach math here. I will tell you where at which part you teach math. This is a perfect formation to teach math. The equation of a circle. Literally, we have to go to a sine and cosine equation to calculate the, 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 the actual distance and everything and plant it inside the drone so that we can have this spiral movement. So where is the AI? The AI is actually this, all DJI drone has two cameras. One camera is pointing bottom, one camera is for the video capture in front. The bottom camera is to recognize the mission pad below and that is using simple AI that they are using and it's one of the cheapest drone uh, that is built in with Intel Modivius NC2. Okay, that is, that is very surprising. Uh, it's 139 USD. Articators will have further discount if you apply from DJI. Uh, again, I do not get commission out of this. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, just as educator to educator we are sharing. Of course, uh, make it more fun, let's get some cute robots in. This is from UV Tech. Uh, what we're going to do this is actually Android built in. The SDK is open. You can build your own app uh, on this uh, uh, little cube robot and you can do synchronized dancing. So my dream is to make this four, four robot to become like BTS, the robotic BTS in, in, in K-pop. So enjoy this show. This certainly trail will show everybody up in COVID-19 situation. Okay, this robot has, you can work it, uh, you can actually, it has a built-in Google Home or you want to use Serim, you can use Serim with it. Actually, it's a voice command, you can talk to it by saying, hey Mini, what is today's day, uh, weather like in Singapore and it has uh, AI built-in. So this is a very interesting robot to play with and it's not expensive and it's uh, available in all, uh, should be all countries. Okay, so make it fun and I hope that you find that it's fun enough for students to be motivated to learn. So as I come to my ending, so four parts, convince yourself that AI is for your youth or for your child future and really believe it and lead by example that you're willing to get your hand dirty to learn Python, to learn all the necessary AI stuff and create ownership. So I will share with you how we create ownership that the students will be actually will be getting a certificate from Intel at the same time they will be working overseas friends on an AI project. So they have a motivation to learn and they will create that ownership. And the last part, but not least, coding can be very painful, especially I, did, I, I didn't share it with you, Auntie Judy actually troubleshoot until 3 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> I was shocked. Okay, 3 a.m., she's still awake and, and she just want to find a bug. And, uh, but we have to make it fun, right? With all the robots and everything. So I hope uh, you have enjoyed my session. And this is actually our Instagram account and also our Facebook account, eSpace W. If you have any question, and all the videos, the links are all there, right?
Thank you. Any question? The cost, right? Yes. Uh, is it like a, uh, one week, one month? Oh, good question. Uh, our program is non-curriculum. That's to say that it can be very long. Uh, our Before pre boot camp, the student is able to learn Python on their own and easily 30 hours on their own time. And during the boot camp, it can be two weeks or one week. We, this time around, we are trying five days, which is around 40 hours. And it can stretch to 80 hours for two weeks if you want. So besides that, after that, the students do project on their own. Again, it's based on their motivation. We are estimating each project will take uh, about six months to do a social impact AI project, minimum. So you see, it must be you know, it might be driven, the student might believe that this is important to them and this is worth doing. That they will in fact invest their free time beside you know, students who play, watch movies, anime, and playing games, but they are investing their time on coding on STEM and getting themselves ready. This really have to, it's a paradigm shift. Okay, so let's say now you got 100 students in whole of IDE. How many students voluntarily come for this? Oh yeah, that's a very good question. So what we want to do is we're going to impact all students. We hopefully we can get over three years, we can get 15,000 students, you know, get them AI uh, inspired. Of course, the, as we go down the program, you will be have less and less, lesser students, you'll be like something like a pyramid. Sure. So we first batch where we get 20 plus. This time round for my boot camp, I have uh, uh, enrollment. Uh, people get interested. I run boot camp from March and June, maybe in September again. I have 100 over students signing up. Wow. There is only one college. Imagine we multiply it to the other two colleges, it will be more. So we get hope to get more and more as we are, this program is pretty new. So we are getting more uh, staff on board. Then we will have many more boot camps and many more uh, training sessions that we can impact more students. Okay, so let's say now you get an X number of students, right, from your experience of doing previous camps and all that. Not only camps, the course itself. So let's say you got X number of students, how many percent actually drop out? Is it like 80% drop out, 50% drop out, 20%? Because I know computer, usually the drop out is very high. I could safely say that it's usually 10 to 20%. Only? Wow, that's very good, really. Yes, usually. Means the reason why la, the reason why the attraction to go overseas is Ah. And getting to know friends okay. who have the same passion is pretty hard. Okay. And some dropout is because of certain other reasons. Or personal, yeah, personal reasons. And personal reasons. Yeah. Well, that's so uh, it's not easy. So we hope to get them very interested. And, and they are, and my students are really are not academically inclined. And they are very, very distracted people. Okay. You, will, you know, just like engineers, we will have our music. We play and we code. Yeah, they also will have the anime and the movies, the K-dramas, and, and the code at the same time. So they are very distracted too. So how do you... Uh, am I to you? No. no, no. Can, Can I continue asking? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, how, how do you as a teacher, right? I mean, as an educator, uh, uh, try with... Uh, I don't know what's the word. I don't want to use the word battle. Uh, try to handle these distractions. You know, like... Uh, anime, Netflix, uh, and all that, but then you still want to guide them and say, hey, your life is not just about Netflix and anime and music and 45, there's something else in life. How, how as an educator, without punching their face, like, how do you do it? You know? Well, it's a very interesting question. How do you get students not distracted with K-pop, anime, dramas, Netflix, and everything? The answer is very simple. You can't win them. You join them. Okay, well now, when I say join them, I personally watch anime. Okay. okay. I personally watch, Nef I don't watch Netflix, but I watch movies. I must know what is my student playing, watching. Then after that, is there certain elements that we can from there bring it in? For example, I know my student love Korea. Love to? Love go to South Korea. Okay. K-pop, K-drama. Uh, uh. So can we have some friends in Korea, Korea to work together with us and get them very interested? Oh, okay. So right. that's the and from the anime, you know that they like Fast and Furious type of stuff. Yeah. Drone. Let's bring drone. Okay, is there, can we bring a car that is working fast? Okay. Uh, we could bring it. These elements, you know, we work with them, they bring in. In fact, before they, during the Makerspace, before we start this program, we actually built lightsaber, Star Wars, our own Thor hammer, that is actually working. Of course, not attracting lightning, but <laughs> yeah. it's the fake one. So these are things to get them interested. We also bring in cosplay. They love cosplay, but cosplay, the only requirement is they need to 3D print out their own uh, nerf gun, 
it must be functional and it must be exact fit as a replica of an of a actual cosplay uh, of an anime. Uh, so we bring in these all of things to get them you know, with their interest, with their passion and get them to so the, the old school telling them that you know don't waste time here, don't do that. It's not like you you you, you embrace what they are doing yes. and then from there, hey by the way, would you like to do this? Yes, that's the point. Because uh in, in, in short, we as educators and parents of but we have to get involved in their world. It's slightly different, but we have get used to it and well pick up the good things and bring them to <coughs> to learn a skill that is useful for the future and get them ready for AI. In the future, I hope I answered that question. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If is there any yeah. more extra question after after the yeah, whole yeah. session, I can, I will be happy to answer your question. Any more questions? Uh, the rest. Yeah, I was just wondering, is this only open to IT qualified students so far? Or? Oh, this program for Intel AI for youth is open for three colleges. Oh. It's open for all three colleges, and soon we will open up to the uh, learning uh, adult, adult learners. It is coming soon. For my, uh, not all of them are in STEM related. Oh, uh, currently most of them is from School of Engineering and okay. School of Electronics and Focal. Of course, we are all seeing in one way that we can open to School of Business, School of Hospitality, School of uh, Life Science, other type of students because that will be very interesting because AI in these different fields have different variants and different applications. That is something we hope that we can oh, uh, pervasively of, uh, to impact the rest of the schools also. Is something we want to do. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.